when we look at the life of, of, of Gideon, for instance, we will see that God sees beyond. God sees beyond. He looks beyond things. Um, and that is what you and I are supposed to do. We are not supposed to look at one another and see one another for where we are. Because where we are is not who we are. And what we are going through is, is, is also not who we are. We are sons of the Most High God. I believe Africa, South Africa, is really the heartbeat of God for many nations. We've got a beautiful country, beloved. <laughs> we really have a beautiful country. Somebody asked me the other day, will I will I move? Will I go to another country? And I've considered it because of many things. And then I'll make a statement and said, there's something about the African sun over a leadwood tree in the bush felt that flows through my veins. And I don't know if I will ever be able to part with something like that. Sitting under a marula tree and having a leadwood fire, hearing the lions and the jackal howling in the background, knowing that there's so many beautiful things around us. And, and I think as men of God, we should get to a place where we start looking through the issues of negativity and start looking at the beauty that God has given us because we truly have a beautiful country in spite of all the things that's going on. Coming back to to Gideon, the story of Gideon in the book of Judges verses, um, or chapter 6 verse 8. And I'm just going to touch a little bit on Gideon's life, maybe two or three principles. We'll see how it goes. But um, Gideon was one of these Israelites. He was just another man. But his name um, means um, he is a, a virtuous warrior. That, 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 that's who he was. But he never saw himself as somebody that is great. He never saw himself as this warrior. He never saw himself as this leader. He was just the scared little man caught up in his own self, caught up in his own situation because there were wars with the Mesopotamians and, um, and the Midians and the Amalekites. And every time that they have a that they have seed the median knights would come and they would steal their seed and they will take their harvest and then they will go away and this kept on going for how many years how many years for about 40 years this was going on every time that they see time the median knights will come and they will grab the seed and they will so what he did is he went into the wine press and he was busy preparing the seed threshing the seed not on a threshing floor but in a safe place, in a guarded place, in a place where he was hiding. And then the angel, you know the story of the Lord, came to me and he said, Listen, oh, you uh, mighty man of valor. <laughs> he said, Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Are you talking to me? He says, Yes, you are a mighty man of valor. But when we look at this whole picture, Gideon wasn't living a mighty man of valor. He was living a scared man, hiding from the Midianites. He wasn't sure of himself. He was a man that was afraid of things going on ar around him. And um, the first and foremost, or the most significant principle for me in this whole story about Gideon and the Midianites and their threshing floor and hiding and God looking at him is the fact that God sees in every man the very best. I wonder how many of us would have called Gideon a mighty man of valor. I wonder how many of us would have called him a brave man. I wonder how many of us would have looked at him and say, you know what, this man will lead us to fight the Midianites and overcome them. I wonder. I wonder how many of his friends looked at him and said, listen, this man will be the leader. This man will be the salvation. This man will become the man that leads us from where we are to where we need to be. This man will destroy the enemy and bring us back to the promise that God has spoken over us as a nation. This man will deliver us from this evil and he will pre protect our seed, our finances, our income, our livelihood. He will restore everything. When they looked at this man, seeing him 
hiding from the Midianites. But when God looked at him, God didn't see him within his circumstance. God saw him through the eyes of promise. And that's the first principle that I, te that I learned from this man Gideon. That God is looking at us, not of where we are, but of who he made us to be. Man of valor, man of God, you are not where you are. You are much more than that. Maybe your business failed. Maybe your marriage failed. Maybe you're struggling with your sons or your daughters. Maybe you can't make friends. Maybe you are the one that also always finds that you are the outcast. You know, I, I, I don't have many friends. You know, maybe you feel like that crazy man of Gedara. <laughs> you know, the one that was had so many demons. This lonely man in the field, nobody knew about him. They don't even know his name. Maybe you feel like that. But the principle that God teaches us is that God sees the very best in all men. In Judges 6 verse 12, he says, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And that for me is just an amazing thing. Judges 6 verse 15. Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I'm the least of my father's house. So many times we disqualify ourselves because we wanted to be in a different space. We wanted to be in a different place. We never saw our lives the way it is. We thought, I mean, when I look at my life and I look back, let's just go back to, to high school, for instance. I never saw my life the way it played out the last 20 years. Man, when you asked me when I was in matric, what are you going to do? I would have told you, listen, there's a few things. I've got an A, B, C, D and E plan, but none of the A, B, C, D and E plan function. I'm at my Z plan at this stage, it seems, because life happens to us, beloved. Life happens to you as well. But don't disqualify you for where you are, because God has got a greater purpose for your life. This is not the end of your story. This is not the end of, a, of your life. There is seasons coming and going and coming and going and coming and going. The second thing that brings me to this point is the fact that faith isn't something we were born with. That's something that, that Gideon also uh, taught me. He didn't have faith. He struggled with faith. He argued with God. He said to God, listen, if you want me to do this, I'm going to throw out this piece of, 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 of skin. And tomorrow morning when I wake up, it should be dry and the ground should be wet. The next morning it happened like that. And he said, you know what, mm, Lord, I'm not quite sure. Please, let's go through this exercise again and then. Please reverse it. So now the skin must be wet and the ground must be dry. And it happened like that. You see, but God showed us through these events and through the events of where he needed to select men to go and fight the Midianites. God showed him through these events that he's a faithful God. And through all these things, every moment in his life, his faith was built. You see, beloved, your faith needs to be built. You don't just wake up one morning and suddenly you are a faithful servant. Or suddenly you have the faith to move mountains. No. Stop hitting yourself over the head because you don't have this faith. Faith is inside of you. But this faith needs to grow. It needs to develop. It needs to overcome certain things to get to a different place. Sometimes I was looking at great men in the word of God and also in our time. And then I heard this guy sewing an airplane and this guy sewed a house and this guy sewed a car and this guy I said, Lord, 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 how? Do you know how he sewed a car? You know how he sold an, uh, 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 sewed an airplane? By giving the first 10 rand. 
and then giving another 15 and then giving another 100. And then suddenly he gave a thousand. And when God asked him to give a hundred, it wasn't a problem because he was used to giving a thousand. And that's the same way God builds our faith. You and I have many testimonies. And I believe we can sit around the table and we can encourage one another with our testimonies. But that is the moment that God is creating and building you as a man of faith. So don't disqualify the moments. When you get to a place and you struggle and say, but I don't have money. I don't have this relationship. I don't have that. And, I don't. and God takes us through these tests. It's not to disqualify you. It is so that your faith as a man of God can be built. So that when you look at your son and your daughter and your generation, you can speak life over them and know without a shadow of a doubt that God will restore a generation where you can look at our nation at our country at this beautiful land that God has placed upon upon our hearts there's a reason God has placed you in this nation there's a reason why God has placed you where he has placed you maybe you are looking at this DVD or this uh, a YouTube clip sometimes or you are looking from the States or you're looking from from Australia or Argentina or really doesn't matter but God has planted you in a specific place for a specific purpose within this specific season and beloved where God has planted you grow grow your life grow your faith grow your stature grow your identity grow your purpose enlarge your vision because greater things are yet to come in your life when we go and, 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 and we run through Gideon further, he says, God will help you to increase your faith. Because that is what God did to him. And he said, you know what? I will do this for you. You know what? I will do that for you. I will. And so God helped him to increase our faith. When we take time to sit with God and have a conversation with him, say, Father, I need to grow in my faith that's one of the things that i ask god for constantly say lord i need to grow in my faith not because i don't believe him but the way i believed him yesterday shouldn't be the way that i believe in him tomorrow and it shouldn't be the way that i believe him within a year or two of now because there should become a faith that is unstoppable a believing that is unstoppable and you and i can only cause that by going through the process of learning how God works with us. One of the other principles that, that I believe that Gideon taught me is that the little we have, God turns into much. The little we have, God turns into much. Into much. God can always help us turn our weaknesses into strength. Coming back to the story of where he needed to to capture some men and say, listen, we need to fight the, uh, the, the Midianites. Who's with me? So, long story short, 32,000 people or men raised their hands and said, listen, we are in it. We're going to go. And he said, God, we are ready. We, we are. He said, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. But just, just wait a minute. I need less than that. He said, well, Lord, okay. And then he made a plan and it came down to 10,000. And God said, you know, it's good. Thank you very much. But I still need less. Long story short, he gets 300 men. 300 men. Just 300. Against an army of the Midianites. You know the story just as good as I am. God came, used those 300 men, and they had a tremendous victory in the land. And God saved the nation with only 300 men. What do you have in your hand, man of God? Because don't underestimate the little things God has given you. Say, my name, and I'm the least. I'm always sitting at the back of the church. Pastor David never asked me to do anything. By the way, he shouldn't ask you, you should volunteer. But that's a story for a whole other day. 
I'm sitting at the back. Nobody really knows me. Nobody. God knows. God knows you. God knows you don't have much. <laughs> but God isn't phased. God's not looking at your stature as a man. What clothes do you wear? I only wear this. Where do you shop? A.C. Kermans. I shop at A.C. Kermans. Where do you shop? You see, it's irrelevant. What type of shoes do you wear? What car do you, do you drive? What is your position at work? Do you have a work? Are you a CEO? Tell me, brother, how does your bank balance look? No, I'm on my way to my first 100 million. I'm at 87 already. Really? Really? That should impress? Not God. Because God isn't interested of the things around us. God is interested in the man within us. God is interested in who we become. Because it's easy to fly to a mountaintop. It's a whole different story to journey to the mountaintop. Both will enjoy the vision, but one will have a greater experience than the other. One will be able to tell you, listen, look at this, look at this, look at this. And what he saw and who he became in the journey is more important than the destination. I always use this as, as an example. I like hunting and fishing and the outdoors. So let's take hunting as an example. When I'm so excited, say, listen, um, my friends phone me. We are going hunting when you go. They don't even ask. The phone is in mid-air and I'm on my way, got in the 4x4 and I get to the farm. When I get to the farm, they ask me, did you bring something to drink? Uh, 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 should, should I should I have? Uh, uh, yes, did you bring some food? Uh, 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 no. Um, where's your weapon? Uh, um, I forgot it. Uh, 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 where's your bullets? No, I haven't borrowed it. Where's your knife for skinning? Uh, no, where's the where's, where's the hooks for the bolt and where's the spices? Where's the boxes? Where's the black bags? Where's the etc. 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 I was so eager to get to the destination that in my journey I forgot to pick up the essentials so that I am prepared when I arrived at my destination. Brother, don't be so hasty in getting somewhere, forgetting what God is busy making and creating in your life. Because that is more important than where you are going. You cannot enjoy the destination unless you journeyed and picked up all the things you needed to pick up so that you can be prepared when you are there. That is most important. And enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. And grab hold of what God has got in store for you. So God turns a little into much. The other thing that I believe that God wants to teach us tonight is. Let God rule your life and no man. Because Gideon wasn't really interested in what the men were saying. He was interested in what God was saying. Now when we look at the story we also and always look hindsight back. And that's always the best side. They say hindsight is always the best side. It's easy to look back and say, listen, you know what? Gideon knew what he was doing. Gideon knew and he understood, but he didn't know. In the moment, he didn't know. He didn't know what God's plans was. He he was also maybe frightened as a man when God said, no, no, leave the 32,000 because there's strength in numbers. Listen, when there's 32 people shouting at you from a stadium, ask, ask the stormers when they go and visit the Blue Bulls. There's 32,000 supporters shouting. And then most of, the, most of the time they lose. They should lose. But that also happens when the Bulls place the Stormers where they are. In New Orleans. Because there's this crowd. There's this atmosphere. And he knew it was like that. But God said no. But he wasn't phased by with what the people said. I think there's many people that said, Listen, but there's something wrong with you. You can't only take 10,000 people. And then he only took 300 people. There must have been men that said, listen, you're insane. There's no ways I can make a connection with you. There must be something wrong with you. Something you ate this morning didn't gel because it's just impossible for 300 men to overcome the Midianites. That 
suppressed us for 40 years. Something must... But his eyes were fixed on what God has said yes. for his life. There's so much greatness inside of you. God has spoken of a word and a promise over your life. God has given you prophetically a direction. God has made statements over your life. I want to ask you a question tonight. How many times did you and I allow other men to disqualify the word that God has spoken over your life? How many of us are still busy with the things, dreaming for the promise? Too scared to take a step and make a leap because people say you won't make it. Because men say you'll never make it. The economy of this country is a mess. You shouldn't start a new business. You are crazy even to consider starting a new. What did God tell you to do? Because it is in the doing what God tells you where the blessing lies. And you and I should stop focusing on what's around us and start listening to the voice within us because that is the that is the place where the power and the glory of God can be made manifest and you and I still remember Gideon up to this day he passed away many 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 years ago but we still remember him why because God gave him to us as a principle to follow because he knew what he instilled in Gideon. But just as Gideon has a story to teach, you and I have a story to teach. Because there's a son, and there's a daughter, and there's a generation looking at you and asking, did you do what God asked you to do? And beloved, that's the place. That's the place where your power lies. Men will be there today and tomorrow they will be gone. Friends might be there today and tomorrow they might not be there. But God is the same yesterday, today and forever. The Bible says he's the fairest of 10,000. It doesn't mean the 10,001 guy is more fairer than Christ. No, no, no. That's not what it means. It means in comparison with all these things, God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. God is all-glorious. God's timing is perfect. Therefore, there is no other name than the name of Jesus Christ. Man of God. Let's become as a Gideon. Let us realize that God rules our lives. Let us realize that the process we are going through is God is helping us to increase our faith. Let us realize that the little we have becomes a mighty force in God's name. And let us see ourselves as God sees us and not as pathetic little men hiding from the enemy. But God looks at us and see us as mighty men of valor. And I want to encourage you. I read a thing or I saw something or I heard it in my spirit. It says, this world will not be changed by your opinions, but it will be changed by your example. Yes. Let us become men with less opinions and godly examples. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Gideon's life. We thank you, Father, that this man went through a process so that we can learn from him, so that we can tonight sit at his feet and say, Gideon, teach us. Teach us what you learned. Just, just something that you learned in this journey with God. 
And thank you, Father, for allowing us to sit around the Word. Listen to your words and your voice tonight so that we also can become men of legacy, men of faith, men of valor, looking towards Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. And Father, as men, sometimes we shoot a little short as to where we should be in our faith. And tonight we humbly come before you and say, Father, help our unbelief. Help us as men becoming and raising up and holding one another and ourselves to a higher standard of victorious living. That every word spoken by our mouths will be in alignment mm -hmm. with the word that God has dropped within our spirit. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, God bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you. Have a wonderful week until we see one another.